So for me, I think Pastor Begg missed this big time. And I think it's a little ironic that he's got a very well-known sermon on biblical worldview. And then he turns around in this instance, he defines everything from a worldly perspective, it seems. Alistair Begg dropped a bomb a little while ago, and he told a grandmother to go to a trans family member's wedding, and not only to go, but to take a gift. And I think that people are upset that he would say this. Ultimately, though, I think it points to something else. People are really disappointed that Alistair Begg could be so hypocritical. So in this video, I do want to try to represent Alistair Begg appropriately. He uh, came out and told a woman in an interview, he was describing a situation where he counseled a woman to go to a trans family member's wedding, and he caveated this with some questions. Does everybody know that you can't condone this? Does everybody know that you can't affirm this in any way? And he said, well, if that's the case, then you should go and take a gift. And I get what he's trying to do, I think, uh, which is to say, you know, we need to not uphold stereotypes of being judgmental. But what Alistair Begg is doing is showing the world that Christians are complete. And so for those of you paying attention, I do want to define a hypocrite. A hypocrite is not some religious person. Hypo hypocrisy has nothing to do with religion, actually. Um, it, well, in, in one sense, it doesn't have anything explicitly to do with religion. But why it's so often associated with religion is because hypocrisy is living in a way that is opposite of the beliefs that you profess. So if you say that you are a Christian, but you do not live that way, then you are being a hypocrite. If you say that you uphold certain standards, such as well-being or compassion for others, then how you live that matters. So without going too far into all the details around what Alistair Begg did, I do, again, want to represent him fairly. He went into an interview um, after the fact, and I think John MacArthur did a really good job of addressing some of the core issues, but one thing that he didn't really address is the, the hypocrisy of Alistair Begg in this situation, probably because they're really good friends, but I think the thing that stings the most is a lot of Christians see this, and they go, this is a black and white issue. Why are you trying to make it a gray issue? Why are you uh, taking a cultural side here when, if it was on the other end of the political spectrum, you'd be against it, it seems? So I'm going to quote Alistair Begg, actually. He said in a follow-up interview, this is where I think he's doubling down. It was in the Christian Post. He said, in that conversation with that grandmother, I was concerned about the well-being of their relationship more than anything else. Hence my counsel. Don't misunderstand that in any way at all. If I was on the receiving end of another question about another situation from another person at another time, I may answer absolutely differently, but in that case, I answered in that way, and I would not answer in any other way, no matter what anybody says on the internet. Now, on one hand, I want to commend Alistair Begg for being a man and saying, you know what, this is, this is where I stand on it. But on the other end of the spectrum is, uh, what are the people on the internet saying, and are they right? Um, there are a lot of people that you're not addressing with this issue, and I think that's why people are very upset about this, actually. And in fact, when we think about worldviews, you, you see the application of a worldview and the definitions of words being used. This had me asking many follow-up questions. Is it affirming and participating to attend a wedding? That's the most fundamental question. Is that a true statement? Is it affirming that union to go and to bring a gift? I would tend to argue, as most people would, that it is. Uh, it doesn't matter what you say. If you say you can't affirm that wet marriage but uh, or gay mirage, if you say you can't affirm that, but then you go and bring a gift, I think that you're being hypocritical. What do you mean by well-being? Whose standard are you using for well-being here? What is, how is this increasing the well-being of the grandmother that you're telling to be hypocritical or the people at the wedding? And the final question is the toughest, which is why are you concerned about the relationship above everything else? I think Jesus addresses this in Matthew 10, 37 pretty clearly. He says that, you know, unless you love me, unless you properly order your life and put God first, then you're not going to apply love and compassion and truth in the, the appropriate way. So for me, I think Pastor Begg missed this big time. And I think it's a little ironic that he's got a very well-known sermon on biblical worldview. And then he turns around in this instance, he defines everything from a worldly perspective, it seems. It would be the same as somebody going to a Sam Smith concert and then saying, well, you know, 
after a little bit of time, there's going to be a demonic sex orgy on the stage. And, you know, I, you know, I, I'm a little torn about going, should I even go to this concert? And the pastor says, well, would all the people around you know that you don't condone this? Would, would they know you're not affirming it? How would they know that you're sitting there silently participating unless you're objecting to it? People don't know. And so to me, this is just offering, encouraging somebody to live hypocritically and offer a pinch of incense. And I think that's why most Christians are actually upset about this. And I don't think it's very fair for Christian leaders to light all these bombs and then walk away. I don't care if it's this instance or the Kevin DeYoung instance with Doug Wilson or the, the Lig Duncan attacking the Moscow mood, any of those things. Um, you know, if you don't feel the need to repent, that's fine. But for everybody's sake, I think the, the frustration is that you're not explaining your thinking here. You're not explaining how you got to that. And I think that's what a lot of people are upset about, is Christian leaders taking these black and white issues and trying to make a gray area out of them.